Now here, we have some division problems, and for these divisions, we're going to get remainders. And that's because 20 is not in the 6 times table, 24 is not in the 7 times table, and 64 is not in the 9 times table. So what we can do is count up in steps of 6 on a number line. So we have 6, 12, 18, and then if we made another jump of 6, we would get 24. But that's too many, because we're only dividing 20. So we need to stop at 3 jumps of 6, and that takes us to 18. Now from 18, to get to 20, we need 2 more. Not 2 more jumps of 6, but just another 2. So our answer is 3 remainder 2. That's because we made 3 jumps of 6, but then we needed 2 more to get to 20. Now we have 24 divided by 7, so we can count in steps of 7. We have 7, 14, 21, but then if we made another jump of 7, that would take us to 28, and that would be too many. So we need to stop at 3 jumps of 7, which takes us to 21. Then, from 21, we need to think, how many do we need to count on to get to 24? Well, 21 plus 3 is 24, and that means our answer is 3 remainder 3. That's because we made 3 jumps of 7, but that only took us to 21, and from 21, we needed another 3 to get to 24, so that's why our remainder is 3. Now we have 64 divided by 9, so let's count up in steps of 9. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63. Now if we added another jump of 9, that would take us to 72, but we were only dividing 64, so we need to stop at 63, and then from 63, we just need one more, we need to add 1 to get to 64. So our answer is 7 remainder 1, that's because we made 7 jumps of 9, but that only took us to 63. And from that, we needed one more to get to our dividend, to get to 64. So that's why our remainder is 1. Notice 3 times 6 is 18. Then from 18, we need 2 more to get to 20. 3 times 7 is 21. Then from 21, we need 3 more to get to 24. And 7 times 9 is 63. Then from 63, we need one more to get to 64. So rather than counting on a number line, the way to solve these mentally is to think what's the closest number in the divisor's times table to the dividend, which is still less than the dividend. So here, for this first question, we could think what's the closest number to 20 in the 6 times table that's still less than 20. Well, that's 18. And 3 times 6 is 18, so we know that 3 will be before the remainder in our answer. But 3 times 6 is 18, and we were dividing 20. So from 18, we need 2 more to get to 20, and that's why our remainder is 2. For this question here, we needed to think of a number in the 7 times table that's as close to 24 as possible but not more than 24. That's 21. And 3 times 7 is 21, so we write a 3 before the remainder. But 3 times 7 is 21, and we need to count on 3, or add 3 to 21, to get to 24. So that's why our remainder is 3. Then, for this last question, we needed to think of a number in the 9 times table that's as close to 64 as possible, but not more than 64. That's 63. 
And because 7 times 9 is 63, we know that we have a 7 before the remainder. Now from 63, we need to add 1 or count on 1 to get to 64. And that's why our remainder is 1. So let's show these questions on a number line. First, we had 20 divided by 6. We counted up 6, 12, 18, but then we couldn't jump to 24 because we can't go past our dividend. From 18, we just needed to add 2 to get to 20. So now, our answer is 3 remained to 2 because looking at it this way, we've made three groups of six and we have two left over. Or looking at it the other way, we've divided 20 into six groups. We have three counters in each group and two that we can't share out. So that's why we have three remain to two. The next question we looked at was 24 divided by seven. That was three remain to three because we could count 7, 14, 21. We knew that going to 28 would be too many, so we stopped at 21, then added another 3 to get to 24. Now looking at what we have this way, we've shared 24 counters into groups of 7. We have 3 groups and 3 that we can't share out, so we have 3 remain to 3. Or, if we were dividing by splitting 24 into 7 groups, we would have 3 in each group and then 3 that were remaining that couldn't be put in a group. Our last question was 64 divided by 9. We can count up 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63. Going to 72 would be too many, but from 63, we just need to add 1 to get to 64. Now our answer is 7 remain to 1, because if we make groups of 9, we can make 7 groups and then have one counter left over, one counter remaining. Or if we're splitting 64 into 9 groups, we can have 7 in each group, but again, there's one that we can't put into a group, so that's why we have seven remainder one. 